Hello everybody, welcome again to another video. I'm sorry I was MIA for about two weeks. I was redoing my workroom. So let's have a look at today's project. This is actually listed on Marketplace as a hardwood dresser. I knew better, obviously just by looking at it, I could tell that it was laminate. And with the damage on top, I don't even know how they even confused this for wood, but anyway. One thing I want to mention, you see how on the back here that says Noye? That means walnut in French, so maybe he was confused and he saw that and assumed that this was made of walnut, I don't know, but there's no walnut to be seen on here, it is a walnut finish only. Most of the frame is solid wood, not walnut, some other type of wood, and the drawers are also made of wood. Overall, this is clearly not a fancy piece, but it's still one deserving of a makeover and you are not going to believe this one. <laughs> Stay tuned. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Hopping right into this project, I'm going to remove all the drawers and have a look at the inside, make sure everything is intact and sturdy. You can see a couple of these drawers here have some broken slides, so I'm going to be replacing those. And the face of these drawers appears to be solid wood with this little strip on the back here for the handle. I'm going to be painting the handle part, but I think I'm going to sand down the rest to the bare wood through this horrible plasticky coating. This piece is pretty dirty though, so before I do anything else, I'm going to give it a good cleaning. This cleaning product I'm using here is Zep Heavy Duty Cleaner Degreaser. I'm scrubbing down the inside of this piece, it's so filthy. This stuff does need to be rinsed off with water, so once I have it all scrubbed, I'm going to take a clean, damp rag, wipe it off, and then dry it. Now, I know it's been a few weeks since you've seen Mr. DeWalt. As you can see, he's all by himself here, and I have taken the plunge somewhat reluctantly and invested in a Festool dust extractor vacuum. I've been really excited to try these. I've heard great things. It is a really nice looking machine. They actually make several different models. Of these three here, which would be the best for what I need them for, I opted for the 26, and the only difference between these three models is the size of the bag, basically the canister where the uh, dust goes. I mostly work with fairly fine dust, so my bag isn't going to fill as quickly as someone using this with, like, say, a table saw or something. I do appreciate how this was packaged and put together in terms of getting it ready to use. There isn't a whole bunch of stuff you have to do. Basically just insert the bag, attach the piece that holds the electrical cord, attach the main hose, and you're pretty much ready to go. Now there was something that stood out to me right away that I don't love about this and that is the fact that only the front two wheels swivel all the way around. These back wheels only go forward and back which makes it a little bit awkward when I need to quickly move this around. My last shop vac had all swiveling casters so it was really easy to turn it in any single direction. So it'll be something to get used to. I really do wish that all four wheels swiveled 360. Now this on the other hand is a feature that I was really excited about. There is a plug here and in my case I can actually plug Mr. DeWalt right into the vacuum and when I turn on the vacuum it's going to supply power to the sander. So I don't need to have these two machines plugged into different plugs. The hose feels really nice. It's a nice soft braided material. It's quite flexible. The downside of this hose, and it's pretty common actually when you're trying to match up tools and machinery from different companies, it doesn't automatically fit in the sander. So I either need to get some sort of adapter, or in my case, I'll probably just use my electrical tape and tape it on like I always do. This was another complaint of mine. This piece is for wrapping the cord around, and these are the screws that were provided. I don't like that because not everyone has the appropriate head to turn these screws. And in my case, the only star-shaped one I had, it was just too loose and I couldn't get it to turn. 
The other thing is the hole was very tight for the screw and despite using a ton of pressure, I could not get it to turn in the hole. So that was kind of annoying. I ended up going into my machine screw stash and pulling out two machine screws that I thought were the closest in size to these. It just fit with the standard Robertson. I was a little worried they'd be loose, but actually once I turned it a few times, it gripped pretty well and pulled this in nice and snug. Why they didn't just send screws like this in the first place or do like Ikea does and send you with a little Allen key or Allen wrench. I just feel like this was a little bit of a disappointment considering the price of this. I'm very excited to have such a long power cord. This is great because in the workroom the way I have it set up now, this cord will basically allow me to move this machine anywhere in the room that I need to be. This machine differs from my shop back in that I can actually control the amount of suction. Here I am struggling trying to get this thing to move with those back wheels. I'm also curious about the sound level, so let's have a listen. That all sounds pretty good. It's a little bit quieter than my shop back was, but the sander itself is loud, so I still wear my ear protection. I didn't find the suction as amazing as the salesman explained it would be, but I think that may be due in part to the fact that my sander is basically entry level. I know some of the more fancy uh, Mirka and Festool sanders have bigger holes and just better airflow in general for suction, so that could be what's making it feel a little bit underwhelming for me, but it's still okay. It's still definitely better than my shop vac was. I'm going to be painting this piece. Here I'm just, I wanted to see what the wood looked like on the legs. I knew that the legs themselves were solid wood, everything else is laminate, like the sides and the top, but I decided to just paint it all anyway. I'm gonna be whitewashing the drawer fronts and painting that little inset piece of the handle. Overall, I'm going for a very light and airy, almost maybe beachy kind of vibe. I just really feel like this piece needs to breathe and lose some of that dark and dingy and dirty <laughs> feel that it has. Now I could have used a chemical stripper on this thick plastic-like coating that they put over top of the wood in the drawers. I really missed sanding. <laughs> I was off for about two weeks while I was redoing my workroom, so I decided to just grab an 80 grit and just blast through that old thick finish. The drawers are solid wood, it's not veneer, I don't have to worry about blowing through it, so I was just having some fun sanding. I have a nice new epoxy floor in the workroom, so I'm going to be using a tarp just to protect it while I do these next steps. I get asked about primer all the time, especially oil-based. A lot of people think that you can't use a latex or acrylic paint over an oil-based primer, and that's not the case anymore. Years and years ago, that was sort of a no-go. But now, as long as the primer has dried thoroughly as to the specifications on the can, you're good to go with pretty much whatever paint you want. I'm priming this piece for two reasons. One, so that the top where I had to sand through those patches is uniform when I paint over it. And two, because I'm using a very light paint. I always double check the back sides of the drawers. There's often stickers and stuff there. That's something you definitely don't want to miss if you're doing a piece to resell. This is a pretty common issue and it's usually caused by a nail or a screw sticking up. So every time the drawer moves in and out, it scrapes against the bottom. So first I tried to just move these down a little bit further. They were actually fairly stripped and weren't turning the way they should. So I opted to put new screws in. That worked so much better and now all of the screw heads are below the level of the drawer so there should be no more issues with the screw heads digging into the bottom of the drawer. 
I'm using the same color paint for the body of the piece as well as making the whitewash. So this is cashmere from Fusion Mineral Paint. It's a nice warm off-white. I'm using about one part paint to two parts water, giving it a good stir. Some people like to brush their whitewash on. I'm just using a shop towel here. The drawers are fairly small, so it's just quick and easy. You have to move fairly fast with this because you don't want your paint to dry. So I basically just put it on in any direction. And then when I go to wipe it off, I wipe with the direction of the grain. And here's a little side by side. You can see that my whitewash is very subtle. That's all I wanted. I wanted these to look as natural as possible. I'm using this adorable little brush that I received from my Amazon wishlist from Kathleen for the large areas of the dresser. And then I'm using this little artist brush to get in here underneath the handle. All in all, on this piece, I used one full can of the primer and I did two coats of the cashmere paint and then sealed the whole piece with clear wax. I know it's been a few weeks now since you've heard about the bunnies, so here is a little rescue bunny intermission. I'm so happy to say that two of them have now gone on to their forever home. We still have two boys and here's a question, have you ever heard a bunny drink? I swear I could totally just do YouTube videos about bunnies all day long and I'd be so happy. I'm replacing the broken slides here or guides. I've heard them called both. Technically, I believe they're called guides. And Willow, my little quality control manager is back just making sure I'm doing a good job. Because this piece was so dingy, I did end up doing a light sanding on the whole drawer, like inside and out, the sides, the underside, and I'm just using some Wise Owl Furniture Salve in the Lemon Verbena scent, which is my absolute favorite. It smells so good. Just going to nourish and protect and seal the wood and get this piece a nice light fragrance. I'm also opting to use it on the drawer slides here as well. Since I have last seen you guys, a pretty big event actually occurred. I received my silver play button from YouTube, which is basically an award for reaching 100,000 subscribers, which I can't even wrap my head around, to be honest. I literally would not have this in my hands were it not for every single one of you that comes back week after week to watch my videos and leave comments, join in on the live chats when I release videos. This is as much your award as it is mine, so huge, huge thank you. Having a quick look back at what I started with, this was a very dark, dingy, and dirty little dresser. No, it's definitely not the fanciest, but this did not deserve a trip to the dump, especially when you see what it looks like now. My new staging area still needs a baseboard, so just ignore the fact that there isn't one in these aftershots, but let's have a look at what this dresser looks like now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.